Hello everyone and welcome to a far belated episode of Brain Food at the Movies. And today I will be reviewing Vin Diesel's latest movie, Riddick. You know, before we get into the rest of the review, I just want to say, considering how the naming on Vin Diesel's other major movie franchise, The Fast and the Furious, have has come along in seven movies. It makes me wonder about this series as well. Because we started off with Pit, Pitch Black, and then we had The Chronicles of Riddick, and now finally we just have Riddick. So does that mean the next movie is going to be Riddick and Riddicker? Or the Riddick and the Riddickius? Or maybe just Riddick, Stabby and McStabber a lot? Who knows? Just something to think about. Well, it's been about two weeks since I last seen the movie, and I'm finally getting around to reviewing it. And overall, my impressions were that, well, I had a good time. I saw it in a theater with a, well, a good amount of people, and, well, we all laughed at it. That was actually one of the good highlights of this movie. It was actually fairly consistently funny in, <laughs> in a lot of ways I never thought it would be. You know, there's lots, it, it reminded me a, a bit like a Marvel movie. Like the worst Marvel movie I have ever seen out of the current crop that's been coming out over the last few years uh, that have been made by Marvel and Disney, I should point out, instead of the other companies that bought up the licenses throughout the 90s, it was Thor, which uh, was, didn't have as much action as any of the other movies, like Captain America or the Iron Man movies. It was good and it was funny. The same thing with Riddick, it was funny. I, I, myself and the uh, rest of the attendees in the theater, we were laughing at a lot of parts and it, it was good humor. It was quite funny. Uh, now the plot of Riddick is that well, Riddick is stranded on an alien planet and left for dead. And he has to get off the planet because it's filled with a bunch of really nasty aliens that come out when it starts raining and there's a giant thunderstorm coming along. And in many ways, it, the movie is a rehash of Pitch Black, except you just had the aliens come out when it's raining instead of the aliens coming out when it's dark. And so Riddick has to play strategy against two groups of mercenaries because he goes to a mercenary outpost and basically gets in front of the camera and goes, Ooh, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. Like, doesn't really do it like that, but you get the gist. And it actually comes with a really interesting subplot because one of the groups, uh, of one of the two groups of mercenaries, while the leader is Boss Jones, played by Matt Noble. And he's actually the father of William Johns, who was the mercenary who was bringing, bringing Reddick in to collect a bounty in Pitch Black and was killed. And, you know, Boss Johns is like, what the hell happened to my kid? And... Well, it's a, it's a bit of an interesting subplot that it, I don't know, it just doesn't f feel as fulfilling as it should have been. It, it was a nice tie back to Pitch Black, but I felt they could have done it a, a lot better. Uh, the aliens definitely look really good. Uh, definitely creepy, definitely strange. And... One of the really good things I actually enjoyed about this movie was that about the first 20 to 25 minutes, uh, first 20 minutes or so, there is a lot of showing of Riddick surviving on this planet by himself when he's com really injured and he's completely messed up. And I actually appreciated that. It wasn't, uh, at one point, Riddick strips off some armor from, I don't know, the necromancers because he was like king of them and they kind of just got rid of him. Carl Orban was like, you know, dude, I gotta go be Dr. McCoy on the Enterprise. I am sick of dealing with your shit. Just, you're stuck in this planet. Here, go away. Leave me alone. And, well, Riddick has a messed up leg. And you actually see what he's going to do. He doesn't explain, oh, my leg's busted up. I have to just, oh, hang on, let me do my, my legs. I should never do impressions. I should never do impressions. But you see him using the armor and just basically drilling in these bolts into the bone just to make sure that the, the leg stays, is set straight and kept straight. 
and it shows him you know gathering food and it show and it shows him at one point uh, basically making himself more and more immune to the poison of this one deadly species that is standing in his way and well, just the way it went about that, showing us instead of telling us, it was quite good. And Reddit gets a dog too. Well, I'm not sure what the uh, heck this other alien species on this planet is, but it's like this giant dog. And it's very fun, very cute. And yeah, Reddit gets a dog. That's the other subplot of this movie, Reddit gets a dog. <sighs> so... Re <laughs> Uh, another nice part is that Riddick actually uses a lot, quite a bit of psychological warfare against the two groups of mercenaries in order to get what he wants. He gets, uh, in order to make sure that Riddick doesn't sneak onto either of the two ships and take off with it, uh, the mercenary groups, they take out the, these massive, um, computer banks that controls, you know, the voltage or the amperage or something like that. This is essential to the craft's function. Uh, so that, again, he can't take off with it and is kept under guard. And Riddick plays such really good mind games with them. It's actually really fun to see it because, well, again, I don't really want to spoil too much, but at one point, he's got the two groups so wound up thinking that he might have actually gotten away with taking the two pieces of functioning equipment, uh... Uh, and oh geez you gotta see it uh, this movie also stars it stars Dave Bautista as Diaz and he was basically this big dude is giant I mean holy smoke he's giant and you know Bautista is he's actually a pretty good actor in this you know he's he's got presence he, he's not just saying the lines he actually is doing some acting here and I thought that was really good and we also have Katie Sackhoff as Doll, who is, well, a lesbian. And uh, it, she, she says this one line. Uh, oh God, I can't even remember what it is. Uh, and, uh, well, she's, she's tough, and she's there, and she's good on screen. Um, and part of it is just, well, just thinking about it. But really, what I really didn't like is that she is literally the only woman in uh, amongst these two groups of mercenaries, and that somehow means it's time for you know this one guy. Let's see here if I can pronounce his name right. Jordi Mola as Santana, who is the French rapist leader of the first mercenary group that lands on the planet to collect Reddick's head. I'm not, and they say we're going to collect your head. We have a box for it. They actually bring a box. For for Reddick's head, and yeah, you did hear me. He's a rapist, and like, and because he tries to go after Doll many times, Doll puts him in his place. I'm like, is this really necessary? I, I mean, why are we going there with this? It, it didn't really serve any point to the plot, you know. I, I felt I don't know. They could have done something different with it, uh, but. Overall, it felt like the subplot with the father, you know, Boss John, Johns, Jones, Johns, sorry, Johns, it didn't feel like it went anywhere. It, it, it was just, and Riddick, it was, he was just there to figure out what happened to his son, and Riddick's like, oh, you got a good spine, because most mercs usually have weak spines, because your son had a weak spine, and his weakness was morphine. And he was going to kill a kid. And I was like, no... Well, okay, that's nice, I suppose, and 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 then at one point, and then there was just some stuff in there that Riddick himself says, like he, he says, you know, uh, uh, you know, I I'm not what you should fear the most. Although the nice thing is that the uh, most of the mercs are like, dude, we're going after Riddick. We gotta be really careful uh, because he's gonna kick our ass, and as he does, he kicks a lot of ass. At one point, he all but Batman's uh, one mercenary, like just comes out of the darkness, knocks the guy out, and then snatches him when he's like literally back to back with another mercenary. And 
I had, I had a good time. It was nice, but just some of the stuff Riddick Rid Rid was saying. Like at one point, he says, "I'm going to kick all your asses, and then I'm going to go balls deep and doll." I'm like, "What?" Now you may be asking. Uh, you may be wondering why am I so concerned with, with that part, and considering you know how high of a body count that Riddick has, you know built up over the course of three movies and considering what else he's done in between those three movies and before the first movie and it just feels so completely out of nowhere like it was just tossed in there completely at random uh, I, I'm not even it's been a while since I last seen Pitch Black so I'm not sure if he says anything like that but uh, towards uh, the the female character in that movie, but it's just it, it was just completely out of nowhere, and also apparently uh, in the final ten minutes when they uh, before they show uh, they before they show the two ships leaving because uh, because all of one mercenary group gets completely slaughtered, uh, including Bautista. You know, shouldn't have done it. Shouldn't have done it, man. So I'll say about that part. Uh, apparently, yeah, he does go ball deep, uh, deep and doll. I'm like, why? 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 Yeah. You know, it, it, was, it was a nice shot. It was, it was a nice child out to have some good diversity in there. I mean, there was even a really nice part where, you know, doll is, uh, you know, she's painting her, her toenails. You know, it's just like, it's just more paint to paint toenails pink. You know, because, you know, uh, women are actually allowed to like, you know, uh, pink things. And it, it just struck me as com coming completely out of nowhere. Like, it was just tossed in for no reason whatsoever. So, overall, yeah, I had a good time, but I'd honestly wait for this to come out, you know. Uh, if, if someone, if a fan of Vin Diesel buys this DVD, find them, borrow it, and then read it, or maybe wait till it comes on Netflix or something like that, and then watch it. You know, it's good for a watch, I, but I wouldn't really spend any money on it. Uh, I'm Triple J, and that's all I got left to say. Take care.